people who come to see a clinician come because things aren't right. Uh, they have a problem. At its very least, the problem indicates you are not immortal. Uh, you can't do everything yourself. You are vulnerable. You need help. Now, from that position to you need the helper is not a very big step. I was busy trying to be this perfectionistic, legalistic person who could do everything just right. And um, I, if I wasn't by then, I rapidly became a very committed workaholic. And uh, I came back and began teaching at Loma Linda in 1967. And an 80-hour, 80 88-hour week was typical unless I was busy when I would put in more. He was, I mean, if there was something going on in the community, he was involved in it somehow, and he was probably the chair of the committee, or he was on the committee, and supper was timed based on, you know, which meeting he had to get out to, and that's, you know, that's just the way we did it, or else he'd be calling, letting us know he was late, and so we'd keep everything warm so that, you know, we could still have family dinner together most of the time, but it was always, there was always something happening. What that resulted in is what you can easily imagine. Uh, I'd been here 10 years when I had migraine headaches, that made me dysfunctional, I could not work, and I had to change my lifestyle. And I realized I could never achieve uh, the dreams that I had set up for myself. By the early 80s, my daughter was anorectic. At about the same time, I realized my son was into drugs and alcohol. My wife and I would talk civilly to each other, but not much more. And everything that really mattered was just a disaster. And I felt as if my life was a failure. I was attending my first METS conference. This was up at um, Arrowhead Springs. And on Saturday morning, Dr. Bill Bright spoke. And he did what I suspect he does every time. He presented the gospel. I'm sure I had been present before when the gospel had been presented. I can't imagine I hadn't been, but I never heard it before. And what I heard that morning was something so direct and so simple that it negated all the stuff I'd been trying to do. And my first reaction was, it can't be that simple. But by the end of the presentation, by the end of the morning, I was convinced it was. And then I was faced with, but what about all the work you've done? Doesn't it count for something? Don't you get any credit at all? And I had to swallow the bitter, bitter pill. No, I didn't get any credit at all. It's all Christ. What I see in Dr. Elder that I want in my own life is um, his earnest desire to know what God wants him to do with his life. I met a fellow called Richard. Richard was one of 10 children, seven boys, three girls. Each of the 10 children was an dr injection drug user. Five of the seven boys were known to be gay, and maybe the others were too. He didn't know. One had already died of AIDS. He suspected another had it, and he had it. And as I talked with him, I liked Richard. As I talked with him, I found out that his father had systematically abused every child, physically, emotionally, and sexually. And this struck me, I mean, I hear the words. I, I know what he's saying in terms of act, but I have no experience. I have nothing that relates to that. And many times I would just sit there on my side of the desk wondering, why am I on this side of the desk and Richard's at the other side? As I struggled with that, I realized I was given a gift. And it's not fair that I got it and Richard didn't but I can give my gift away and I can make it more fair. Shortly after that, a matter of a few months, I awakened one morning around 1.30 or so. And I had this sort of question, Harvey, if Christ were an infectious disease physician in Loma Linda, what would he do? It was very clear to me. He'd take care of AIDS patients. So that became my core principles. God loves you, created you to know him personally, yeah. When we go into the hospital and talk to patients, of the non-Christian patients we talk to, between 60 and 65% pray to receive Christ. So that the sick person realizes, 
I can't do it, I need help, is a very vulnerable time. And so one has to be very ethical, but uh, being very ethical, these people are ready to receive Christ. Uh, in my practice as a uh, uh, physician taking care of AIDS patients, about a third of the AIDS patients will give their heart to Christ if given a chance. Dr. Elder has been uh, a spiritual, spiritual mentor that has uh, uh, brought me um, to Christ and uh, to accept that Christ is my personal Savior. And uh, besides that, he also uh, teaches me a lot about how to share faith with others. Last night we had a Bible study here and the students who were with me as they are, they are juniors and they're beginning to think of what are they gonna do for a residency? But they're asking the question in terms of the kingdom of God. How can they best serve God? Not what's the most lucrative practice and that thrills us because what we're looking for is, to re is reproduction of people who have set their goal in the kingdom and on the advancement of the kingdom. The Medical Strategic Network is committed to discipling clinicians so that the arena of clinical practice becomes an arena of the kingdom. That patients and colleagues will not only come to know Christ, but become disciples and disciples so that more and more people will come to know Christ. In 1 Timothy 1, 12 and 13, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who strengthened me, that he considered me faithful and appointed me to his service that I can be considered faithful by the Lord, that I'm appointed to His service. That's everything. That's everything. That's being a father. It's being a grandfather. It's being a husband. That's being a mentor. To me, that's what life is about. Paul goes on to say, even though I was a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, even though I was the arrogant Pharisee that I was, even though I was an intimidating person, I was shown mercy. I was shown mercy. The grace of God was poured out upon me abundantly, along with the faith and love that come through Jesus Christ. That's what it's about.